Hi, I'm Rick Dior. That was a very crazy, fast, difficult, aggressive chart uh, called I Got Rhythm. It's a George Gershwin tune, but this arrangement is done by the Rob McConnell Boss Brass. It's a classic arrangement. This record won a Grammy back in the 80s. I think the record was called All In Good Time. The drummer on the CD, or, or LP, is which what I have, is Terry Clark, great drummer, Canadian drummer, I believe. And um, he does a great job on this stuff. They have a lot of records. He plays on a lot of these records, a really, really fine drummer. So anyway, uh, this chart deals with what's known as metric modulation, where a rhythm in one time signature becomes the actual new time signature. So let's take a look at that today. Uh, this is one of the more advanced charts I'll be doing in this series. So uh, hopefully I'll hold on to everybody here. So the first uh, part of this chart starts out in 6-8. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six. And then that dotted eighth note, which is one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, becomes the new half note. And that's in cut time. So that's bump, 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 ba, bump, bump, ba, da, and that's the new time. And then that half note triplet in cut time, which is, so one, two, one, two. That becomes the new quarter note in three, four. So. All right, so that's the first three lines. And then we basically go back into 4-4 uh, four, four, or 2-4 four here, and then the dotted quarter becomes the quarter. All right, and then finally we go into double time. I'll play the top for you so you can hear it once more. So I played it pretty obviously there, and you see I'm setting up the new modulation. In other words, I'm playing triplets when we're going to that three feel. I'm playing those triplet feels to set up the band into that. And that's what you want to do. It's, it's complicated, but if you study this stuff, you will run across it. I remember I was hit on the head with this chart when I was in Met Manhattan School of Music in the big band. They just passed it out and I was like... What the hell is this? But luckily I had a background in this because I've been playing Elliot Carter's uh, timpani solos, his A timpani solo book. So I was studying that book and that book's all about metric modulation. So uh, this really wasn't a problem for me, but I know the rest of the band it was pretty much a train wreck for a little while until they figured out what was going on. The rest of the tune's pretty straightforward. It's very fast, uh, probably somewhere around um, in the 300 and 15 area, somewhere around there, I didn't chart it. The tempo does go back and forth. They're obviously not using a click when they were recording this. Uh, there's two solos, there's a sax solo, uh, and then there's a trombone solo. The trombone solo, the time is a little bit hard to hear because he's all over the place time-wise, but you know, just hang in there, try to listen to the bass. It's a hard thing to play along with, all right? Uh, lots of times in this chart, I'm playing uh, two and four, I believe, I remember that on the original chart, I don't know where the original chart is, so I wrote a new one out here, but I believe that he wanted two and four in a lot of these places, I think to help the band play together, so basically. And the theme from the beginning does come back at the end there on that last page, just so you know, it's the same exact thing. So there is a elongated drum solo here where basically you just go pretty much crazy, lots of chops, because it's very exciting. You don't want to do anything unexciting here. You've got to keep that energy up. So this is where you use all the chops that you practiced all those years. This is when you use it. You know when folks say, save it for your record? Well, this is an occasion where you do use lots of Buddy Rich-ish chops to fill all this up. And then we fill into this uh, corny two feel. Uh, on page four. So it's one, two. You could 
play the rims if you want, you know, kind of like a Dixie kind of thing. All right, and it's the chart is uh, basically going into these little sections. It's sort of an epic journey here. Now, the one part of the solos, which is um, kind of a floating section, where it's ba da, you know, I'm sure you heard it. So there, you can play the hi hat on two and four. But if you do that, you want to keep it open. So. got to keep the energy up but it's still floating it's active but don't go into your favorite ECM feel there again you've got to keep that energy and then it goes right back into walking time now I've done several videos on playing fast um, it's something that you have to work on especially when you're doing it for this long so I definitely suggest watching those I'll reference them in the description of this video on YouTube but Suffice it to say, it takes a lot of endurance to do this. So you'll see my hand doing. I'm using lots and lots of fingers. Here's what I'm not doing. I'm not throwing the stick at the cymbal like this. Uh, I don't like that. I know a lot of drummers do that. I, I hate that sound. To me, it's terrible. You need articulation. So you want to, all those notes to be clean. That helps the band, all right? And of course, that two and four hi-hat also really, really helps the band. There's a lot of figures in this, in this chart. You don't have to catch them all, but there's a lot of big ones. That sax soli section that's on page four, I love these, this Chinese or this swish symbol under that. And that's even more difficult to play fast uh, with because it sucks you in because it's so loose. So again, it's a workout for, for that dominant hand. All right. The ending, it says showbiz. I wrote that. That's what it sounds like to me. Showbiz to beat. So. There's that accent there. The bass drum and the hi-hat. That's that to beat. All right, everybody knows that, you know, from the old shows on Broadway. So that's pretty much it. I'll show you, uh, now I'll show you a uh, version of this video with some different views. And we'll be back next time with a little bit simpler chart. Thanks.